up, guys? It's Megan James coming at you live from the Megan James Show. Today, we're going to talk to you about something that we haven't discussed yet, but it is of utmost importance, and I'm going to bring the fire. If you don't like cursing, you might want to tune off now because I may drop some F-bombs. The reason being is because you guys, most of you listening, are either entrepreneurs or you're small business owners, big business owners, or you're just looking to kind of uh, build a, a niche or an edge in whatever it is you do for a living. So whether you're a content developer, a plumber, an electrician, you own a mechanic shop, or maybe you own a big ass company, I don't know. One critical component, as we all are aware, are marketing, right? So you have individuals out there in the world, people that you have to reach to show them what you have to offer them, your business. Easy enough. However, we also are aware that there are many other businesses competing on that same platform that has access to the same tools we have access to marketing their same business style. So how do we reach our customers? How do we beat out our competition usually? Mostly we buy advertising. So whether you're buying billboards, whether you're buying television commercials, which honestly, let's be real here, are obsolete. Unless you're buying a Super Bowl commercial, television is obsolete. People are tuning in to things like Netflix and Hulu, and there are more packages coming out every day. Disney's buying their own. Uh, you know, HBO has a thing going on. So people eventually are going to cut out television completely. It's just going to be obsolete. Because when you can subscribe to your favorite shows, your favorite movies on your own time, why the fuck would you waste time and more money paying for TV when you have to watch something at a certain time? I understand the invention of things like the hopper and you can, you know, pre-record shows and stuff like that. But in reality, when you want access to things right then, it's going to become an online platform. Totally. So if you're wasting money on television commercials and, and when honestly, with all this technology right now, when's the last time any of you be real with yourself have sat down to watch TV and physically watched the commercials, not playing on your phone. Not talking to your significant other, your family, your friends, um, you know, texting, hitting up Facebook, Instagram, something like that, completely fucking distracted. When's the last time you sat down and watched a commercial? You didn't fast forward through it. I I don't I don't remember the last time. Probably the last time was what? The Super Bowl. Because that's the only fucking commercial that matters. Let's be real. Okay, so we're plugging into marketing platforms like commercials. We're plugging into things like um magazines aren't really big now it's mostly social media let's be honest okay instagram facebook you can buy ads on there you can even buy ads on the stories which are completely underpriced you guys need to be taking advantage of buying advertisements on the stories on instagram that's gonna absolutely give your business an edge but outside of social media and tv and some print media and you know billboards and things like that okay Let's talk about some other ways. Obviously, network marketing, because word of mouth is going to get around faster than any other type. But yet another way, which has grossly, grossly been underpriced, is podcasting. Simple as that. Your fucking business is not going to have the edge you want to have. It's not going to do as well as its competitors if it doesn't start keeping up with the trends. And the right now, the trend is podcasting. I'm not playing with you guys. Right now, as of 2019, there are 700,000 active podcasts and over 29 million podcast episodes. That's insane. Last year, this same time, that number was at 550,000 and 18.5 million, respectively. That's how fast this game is growing. And if your business doesn't have a podcast, and here's what I mean when I say have a podcast, because if you're out there, I know y'all that are like plumbers and electricians, y'all fuckers are right now thinking, oh, uh, I I'm, I'm, I don't need a podcast. I, no, I'm a plumber. Like, what am I going to do with a podcast? Or, oh, I'm out here and I'm, um, you know, I build houses and shit. What am I going to do with a podcast? I don't, I don't have anything to talk about. Everyone has something to talk about. Okay, because here's how this trend is going to work. Right now, the talk to text features on our phones, on our tablets, on our computers, 
it's only going to grow from there. AI technology is coming, guys. And if you're not fucking fighting to get ahead, if you're not fighting to get an edge and to get on top of the technology that's building, if you're not using that in your business platform, guys, I'm just saying, there's been a lot of places, <laughs> Blockbuster, that didn't keep up with these trends and look where they are now. Most millennials haven't even fucking heard of some of these businesses because they've been out. When the internet took hold, these retail establishments panicked, but they never caught up with the trend. So what are you going to do when these talk-to-text features grow? And it gets to the point where, say I go to order a pair of shoes. And I say, Siri, give me, I don't know, women's pair of shoes size 7. What's going to distinguish? Because by that point, people are going to, you think, you think people are jumping on AdWords right now, Google AdWords. That's like nothing in comparison to what's going to happen when these search engines start owning audible words. So what's going to distinguish between me saying, Siri, get me a women's pair of shoes, size seven, Nike versus adidas versus reebok versus whatever other brand you like what is going to distinguish that the only way that you can really set yourself apart from other brands that you're competing with is in fact your brand what makes you specifically you what ties people to you and your company it's a personal thing at that point you've got to make it personal if you want loyal people Loyal customers coming to you and your brand and not your fucking competitors, then you've got to build a brand, which can encompass all platforms, social media, written, audio, video, uh, you know, every kind of platform out there. Because what's going to happen is Joe Schmo, who owns a shoe shop called, I don't know, Mo Shoes, doesn't keep up. He doesn't keep up. He doesn't have a podcast. He doesn't have any kind of audible transcriptions of any of these videos he's put out on YouTube and YouTube just isn't doing what it was, you know, we've gotten attached to things like Instagram, suddenly Instagram is just falling off the face of the fucking earth, like MySpace. I mean, it happens, guys, if you're relying solely on things like Twitter, um, you know, what happens when Twitter's off the map? I mean, it, it, it's way off the map from what it was, you know, a few years back, it was a lot bigger than it is now. Um, and there's so many things, guys, it can change between now and a year from now. But take advantage of the rise because I can tell you right now, this is going to change for the better. Over 70% of the population within the United States alone is familiar with the term podcasting. This equates to roughly 227 million people that know about this field. The majority of the podcasting audience, 67%, consists of 18 to 44-year-olds. And most of these people are educated and reside in wealthier sections of the society. So think about it like this. 45% of those podcast listeners will have a college degree and are 68% more likely for a listener to have a postgraduate degree. So when we combine things like high education and wealthier sections of society, we get an optimized group that we kind of want to target for our market, right? So this group of people are also more likely to fall in what we call the high net worth category of individuals. So, how does this affect you? Well, the listener is 45% more likely to have an annual household income of over a quarter million dollars. $250,000 as an annual household income. This is how that's going to affect you. Susie Blue Shoes has an annual household income of sixty grand. they are fighting off fifteen grand in credit card debt. $45,000 in accumulated student loans. They're paying for at least one vehicle. They have a mortgage. And they're also having to make repairs, pay medical costs, and whatever else they got going on. Plus, put, put the food on the table. Okay? And you're advertising your business of, gosh, I don't know, something that's necessary in society like, you know, I'm going to stick with HVAC system on this one. Okay? And you go and you inspect their house and they're in desperate need of an HVAC system and the lowest cost that you can give them is sixty five grand, And they've already accumulated all this credit card debt. How are they going to be able to afford that? Honestly. So we already know that if we're in this, this range, we want to be able to reach people of a higher 
uh, household income, if we're really wanting to market our services correctly, if we really want to get the highest cost out of them, right? So Susie Blue Shoes, she's got, you know, that 60 grand annual household income. But we go over here to, I don't know, Molly Molehill. Loving these names I'm coming up with here. Molly Molehill has a household income of $250,000. She's smartly invested and she doesn't have that much debt. Who do you think is going to be more likely to buy that HVAC system? Now, let me put it into these terms for you. Somebody out there right now listening to this podcast is in that bracket. How likely, if I was to right now have a pre-roll, mid-roll, whatever on my podcast for 30 seconds of a product that I use on a daily basis. I, I don't know. What do I use? I use... Um, I work out a lot. So a piece of workout equipment, right? So say I, I'm making up names here, guys. Um, we'll say like a pink roller or something. It would be like a, a muscle roller where you can roll out the soreness in your muscles, okay? And I start, I do a 30-second advertisement for a company on that. And my whole podcast is directed towards health and wellness and fitness and things like that. So mostly all my listeners are coming to me for this type of advice, for this type of information. And I just so happen to market a fitness item. To these people living in wealthier populations with a higher annual household income, how likely do you think it is that one of them will buy that product? Guys, I'm, it's, it's easy. It's simple numbers, and I'm not overinflating this as your actual statistics you can find. Um, I'll give you, I'll actually put the link in uh, this podcast episode of where you can find my article I wrote on this, which has a ton of links to other articles and other information out there that can help you if you're really trying to decide between getting a podcast or, or how to market yourself using a podcast community. The big thing right now uh, is pre-rolls and mid-rolls. So say that you just don't feel like you can commit to having a podcast yourself. There's a ton of, tons of options out there. So one thing is, you know, there are people out there that you can actually hire to build a podcast for you from scratch. They tell you, um, you know, they figure out what kinds of goals you have, what you're trying to accomplish and what your budget's looking like. They will show you the equipment that you'll need and they can go from a low to high range, depending on what your budget is. They'll sit down with you, order the equipment together. They will set up the equipment. They will show you how to run everything. And in that time, Say that it's just, for some reason, this this plan just seems so overwhelming that you don't think you can do it yourself. There are also people that you can hire to maintain that. So the person that set this up for you can also train somebody to maintain this podcast for you, and you don't have to get involved at all. However, I don't recommend that because one thing that I focus on in any kind of business development is knowing what the fuck goes on in your business. So every aspect, whether it's sorting mail, answering phones, distributing um memos, whatever the case is, you need to know what's going on and you need to know how to fill in. So you're not caught between a rock and a hard place if somebody quits. You can just fill in until you can get somebody else to take their place, right? It's not going to make a difference. I'm not saying you have to do everything yourself, but I'm saying you have to know how to do everything yourself. That's your fucking responsibility as a business owner. Let's be real. All this delegating and, and trust me, in lifestyle design, I completely understand the purpose of outside outsourcing to get your time back okay that's that's what we pride ourselves on that's something that we've really learned to do over time but I'm saying that's fine but understand that you need to know the components of your business and how to do business on a daily basis through all sections of your business now that we've established that we're going to go back to the podcasting community so you can either one build the podcast yourself with no help I did it I don't have a degree in business. I don't have a degree in marketing. And I sure as hell don't have a degree in IT. So, from scratch, built a mid-range podcast. Entire um, studio quality, travel, everything I wanted. It serves the purpose I want. I built it by myself with no help other than the research materials I found online and books. That's it. You can hire somebody to do it. Now, that's one of the services that my coaching company offers. Um, so we come together with business owners and we help them figure out what the fuck they want to do. We help them through it and we, uh, help them decide on if they want to run it themselves, if they want to hire somebody or whatever the case is. We help them from beginning to end. And if they want us to maintain it, we can do that too. So there are companies out there just like me. If you didn't want to hire me, I would not be offended. Okay. This is not an advertisement for me right now. It's to let you know what kind of shit's out there. All right, moving on. 
You can also say you don't say you're like, I don't want to fuck with another podcast. I don't want to have one for my company. It's just too much work. That's fine. You can buy sections, segments. We call them mid rolls and pre rolls in episodes for podcasts. You can buy advertisement space and have the host read your advertisement. You can actually do that. It's very low cost. It's low budget. And you, there's so many podcasts to choose from. I mean, we just talked about how many there are out there. Think about it. Honestly, it's the limits are, are freaking unreal right now that, that people don't even understand how big of a world the podcasting community is. 29 million podcast episodes that you could choose from to host an advertisement on. And guys, that number's growing every day. In the past 30 days... Um, this was, this was like, um, a quiz that was put out there for people to answer that listen to podcasts. Okay. And the quiz thing, the little question they sent out was in the past 30 days, which device have you used to watch, listen, or download a podcast? And there was a 157% increase since 2014 in smartphone usage of podcasts. So that's what people are using to download these podcasts on. Okay, so you're reaching people on a mobile platform and they're usually stuck someplace. Over 49% were at home and 22% were in the car or truck. So that means they're commuting, right? So they're less likely to skip over your advertisement at this point. If they're commuting, they're not really going to look down at their phone. They're just, they're going to hit play, lay the phone down and start their commute because they want to absorb everything in that episode. And if it's only a 30 second, you know, 15 second, 60 second pre-roll or mid-roll, they're probably not going to be as irritated by it as a TV commercial or something like that. They're not going to fast forward. They're just going to let it play. I know I do. I don't, I'm just like, whatever. As long as the host doesn't overwhelm the show with advertisements or something like that, they can get away with five before I start skipping. Seriously. Five. So imagine if you took advantage of that. Truly. And guys, I'm offering you gold here. Whether or not you choose to accept it, that's on you. But you can't say that no one... That, that you were never told, that, that no one ever provided you with this information because I am right now. It's free. Anyone can access this. Anyone can do this. And you're missing a serious platform. And just think in years from now, you know, after you've established your brand, your brand in, in social media, your visual brand, and now your audible brand, you're going to be so far ahead of your competitors that when people start using, um, you know, talk to text to search things for your business, you're going to stand out. Because you're going to have more audible, um, searchable material. Hey, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the Megan James show. I apologize for the interruption, but I really just wanted to take this time to talk to you about something important. Did you know that you can actually get paid? just for listening to this podcast? I know it sounds insane, but it's true. We just discovered this free new app called PodCoin, and it literally pays you to listen to podcasts. So here's how it works. You listen to podcasts, and you earn PodCoin while you listen. Then you turn that PodCoin in for gift cards at places like Amazon or Starbucks. Or... If you're a good, generous person, you can even donate those pod coins to charity. The more you listen, the more you earn. So here's what you do. Download the app right now on iPhone or Android, and I have a special code for you today. Simply use our code, Megan James, and you'll get 300 pod coin just for signing up. And if you listen to enough of us on here, then you can get a cappuccino at Starbucks, or an awesome gift card on us. So go ahead and go listen to the podcast or virtually any podcast on PodCoin and sign up with the code Megan James. I swear it'll change the way you listen to podcasts. Thanks for listening. And here's the rest of our show. More so than your opponents because you're aware of the trend. You're keeping up with it. You know, you're striving to stay ahead and you're really trying to meet your customers' needs. Because one of the things that fucking kills me in businesses, and this, this, is, this is seriously a pet peeve. When I go to a business and I say, okay, do you have a Facebook page? Yeah, we got a Facebook page. Cool. Uh, you have an Instagram page. Oh, no. We don't have an Instagram. We don't do Instagram. Guys, I don't give a shit if you don't use Instagram on your own for a personal account. I don't care. 
I don't care if you don't like Facebook. I don't care if there's a platform out there that you're like, I can't figure that out or I just hate that platform. Twitter sucks, whatever. That's fine for you. But your business needs to be as diversified as possible. If you can't figure out how to do it, then you need to hire somebody to do it. If you honestly can't look at a book, a video, a YouTube channel, an online course, and figure out how to run social media for your business on multiple platforms, then you need to hire somebody. This is urgent. You need to be on as many platforms as you can get on right now because here's the thing. 45% of your audience may be on that Facebook channel, but guess what they're keeping up with? Not your fucking business. They're keeping up with their family. They're keeping up with their friends. They're getting updates on whose kid looks cuter and which cat meme was funnier. And they're looking for the funny stuff or, you know, new information in the community, um, stuff like that. They're not, they're not going to keep up with business advertisements. They're not there for your business page. You need to have one because that's the source that millennials go to to look for legitimacy, which is, I don't know, to me it's completely ridiculous that that's one of the sources of information that millennials look for to see if a business is legitimate, but it's true. They want to know if you have a A, website, B, Facebook page, and C, any other social media pages, and the more you have, the more legitimate you are in a millennial's mind. It's ridiculous, but this is how it works. And nowadays, if you don't have an online bill pay, you're totally fucked because when you send out an invoice to a millennial or god forbid a generation z they don't know what that is and your bills that you're sending out aren't going to get fucking paid because to them it's a piece of paper and they're like well i don't really know what this is um how do i pay it and if you don't have an online web portal because they're familiar with that they can go onto an online web portal but if they get on your website and there's no online web portal to pay they don't understand how that works. They don't have checks. Nowadays, people do not have checkbooks. That's a thing of the past. And most kids my age, I say kids like we're young, I'm almost 30. Uh, most millennials and, you know, Generation Zs and, and guys coming up in the game, half of them have never written a check. They don't know what a, a checkbook is. They don't know anything about it. They know a checking account comes with a debit card and that's as much as they need to know. So if you don't have an online web portal, you're cutting your business in half right off the bat, straight off the gate. And I know at least 25% of the businesses in Kernersville alone are operating off of that broke mentality that we can just stay with it because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Motherfuckers, it's broke. The system is broke. It's evolved at a faster rate than you have and you're in trouble. Don't blame the economy. Don't blame technology. Don't blame any other circumstances when your business goes out of business because it was your decision not to keep up with the rate of information and technology. I'm giving it to you right here, guys. These are the critical critical components that your business needs. And if you can't figure out how to develop an online web portal, if you can't figure out how to put your business on social media maps, I mean, if you can't figure this stuff out, you got to hire somebody. You've got to find room in that budget. You just have to do it. If you really want to stay in the game, if you want to get ahead of your competition, if you really care about your business, if you want to keep your business, these are things that you've got to start considering you know, and think about it. A decade ago, if somebody would have looked at you and said, man, I just don't feel safe with my kid driving. I think I'm going to put my kid in the car with this stranger that I've never met and have him take her 30 miles away to her location, her stop, and just pay him for it. Or, you know, 10 miles down the road and just pay, pay the stranger for him. You know, the stranger's got my kid in the car. It's fine. If you would have said that to somebody 10 years ago, they would have slapped you across the face and been like, oh, I'm calling Child Protective Services. What the fuck is wrong with you? You know, but nowadays we are more secure with our kids hopping in an Uber, right? Household name now, Uber. Hopping in an Uber with a stranger and having that stranger transport them wherever the fuck they need to go because parents feel more secure with their kids in that stranger's car than they do driving by themselves. But that's how the world has changed today. I mean, you know, fuck, 15 years ago, Facebook was on the map, or I mean, MySpace was on the map, MySpace was the thing, hell, that's how most of us learned to code. And here's the thing, here's, just just take a second for all of you guys out there, Generation Z and, and younger, you have everything you need right now to build your, you know, content developer, content creator, uh, whatever kind of uh, freelance entrepreneurship work you want to do. 
it is at your fucking fingertips and you have no excuse not to put good content out there because back in the day, and yeah, I'm coming from an older person's perspective right now, back in the day, MySpace was how I learned to fucking code because your web- your website didn't come pretty. It came blank as fuck with a white background and you had to figure out how to code the cool shit like banners. You had to figure out how to code your information in a cool font and then when your color got all fucked up, you had to figure out where your, you know, beginning text and your end text got all jacked up. We had to learn code without any freaking books. I mean, it was serious. This is how we learned stuff back in the day. And that was like that everywhere. You know, we had flip phones. We didn't have the internet at our fingertips. We were handicapped by so many things. Not so much as as, as people who grew up in the 70s and the 80s, but... When you grew up in the 90s, the 80s and the 90s, guys, you're handicapped by the shit we didn't have. The World Wide Web was just making an appearance in the household. My parents still had a fucking typewriter. And no, not in that kind of antique damn style that people like now. No. It was a legitimate typewriter. Old as hell. And I was like, wow, this thing's like an antique. Like, this this should be in a museum. I'm, I'm sure of it. But we still had dial-up. Half of you don't even know what the fuck that is. Now, imagine trying to run an online business, a content creator business, on dial-up with flip phones where people could only access your content from computers. And the computers had to load 10 minutes before they could get to one web page. You guys don't know how good you have it. Seriously. If you're not thinking back to how things have changed in the last 20 years, think about that. Think about how far it's come in 20 years and how far it's going to go in the next 20. If you're not fucking paying attention and keeping up with the trends and keeping your business on the map, that's your obligation. That is your obligation as a business owner. If you want your business to succeed, to grow, to expand, to get more business so you can hire more people, so you can do less work, Truly, because that's the goal, right? To be free. If you want that, if you say you want that, that's one thing. But if you truly fucking want that, then it is your damn job to be monitoring this stuff. To keep up with the trends. Get out there and truly try to bring your business on the map in multiple platforms. It's not as intimidating as you've made it up to be in your mind. I assure you, there are hundreds of people out there who love to create content. I'm one of them. I create content for my business, for other businesses, all over the web. And, you know, half of it, I don't even get paid for. I do it for free because I'm hoping, here's my thing. The reason why I do it for free is because one day I woke up and I got fucking pissed off. I got online and I was immediately hit with spam. A little pop-up on my screen that said, give me your email and I'll give you this free PDF book. And from then on, you're getting spammed like once every three days. I was pissed off at banners on Facebook that kept popping up and I couldn't make them go away. I was pissed off by the businesses that were taking advantage of me. I was pissed off that people didn't want to give out any helpful content to truly make an impact in the world without getting something in return. I was pissed off at the selfishness of society. So I decided to start creating my own content for fucking free. Putting real information, usable information out there for people to use. To take advantage of the people who really want to make it out there are actually going to use this information. That's what I wanted. I wanted as many people as possible to succeed on as many platforms as possible. And I want to get information out to the people who are actually looking for it. That's it. That's all I want. I want to create the biggest impact in the world, but guys, I can't do it alone. I need more people there with me. I need more people creating content. I need more people out there driving the force home to really make the change. I need people to want change. So the content that I create predominantly is for free. This podcast is a great example. Our website is just content. It's articles, it's podcasts, it's videos. It's all this content that I'm hoping people will latch onto and use in their lives. I don't have pop-ups on my website that say, give me your web address. I'll send you this free PDF because that shit pisses me off. It really does. It's selfish, right? But if you legitimately ask me for information, I can send it to you. If you come to me, if you see something on my website that you're like, yes, I want to see more of that information, and you hit me up, I have no problem sending you the information. That's not a big deal. We can correspond. 
obviously at that point I need your contact information so I can send you the shit, which makes sense, right? But I don't like unsolicited pop-ups. That just pisses me off. I think the biggest boom in business is coming. And it's not going to be in the way marketing has been in the past years. Marketing right now is broke. It's broken and we've got to fix it. It's not authentic. It's selfish. And I think the only way that marketing is really going to succeed in any kind of way is when it starts building more authentic, selfless content. That's going to be how you grow your business. Because think about what what uh, videos have gone viral on social media, on YouTube. It hasn't been scammy videos about a business. It hasn't been, uh, check out the way I made a million dollars through my online fucking Etsy business. Or, you know, it wasn't these videos. It was that funny cat looked over at a cucumber and freaked the fuck out and we're all sitting all over the nation dying laughing at this cat that's scared to death of a cucumber. Where, you know, one of the videos that went viral, think about the dentist that made that rap song and dance about clean teeth. It had to do with his business, right? But he wasn't marketing, come see us. Think about all the freaking videos that have gone viral. Typically, most of them had nothing to do with the business at hand. You know, they were funny. They made us cry. They pulled at our heartstrings. It's just good content. That's the future of marketing. So if you want your business to get on the map, it's not about creating advertisements. It's not about creating more billboards. It's about putting real life-changing content on those billboards in the media that's going to actually alter people's lives and their perspectives. And it's about getting that information out to as many people as possible without asking for anything in return. Because when you are the most selfless that you're ever going to be, that's when people are going to start coming to you and giving you business. That's when you're going to start receiving. So you have to give something to get something. We come in here and guys, we're so fucking entitled now. We think we've just earned everyone's business. We think we've just earned the right. And honestly, what have we given to earn that right? What have we given to show that we've earned that? Truly, how have we made an impact? How have we made a difference? I think when we really start being honest with ourselves, that's when stuff is going to change. When we really start creating authentic content, that's when it's going to change. So you guys come here, you listen to me. I'm assuming you made it this far. Give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts on today's stuff. You know, is this something that helped you? Is this something that you want to hear more about? Um... Or you want me to take it back to just life coaching, um, life uh, development, self-development, relationships. Because I'll keep doing that stuff. But if you're really getting something out of business, if you're really getting something out of an entrepreneur mentality, I'm going to put more content out there to do with that. Because like I said, guys, this is is for you guys. This is, I want to take what I've learned over the last couple of decades and put it into a content and put it into a platform that you guys can use to grow yourselves and grow your business and, and get out there and fucking chase your goals and smash them. That's what I want to do. So if this content is helping you in any way, let me know. Give me a shout. You guys, I know, have my um, Instagram page, right? It's, let's see, legacy underscore lifestyle underscore coaching. It's long as fuck, but that's our name, Legacy Lifestyle Coaching. Our website's a little easier www.legacy-lifestyle.com you can also find us on facebook legacy lifestyle coaching and we have an actual facebook page for this podcast called the megan james show look us up on any of those things uh we actually have a contact page on our website feel free to contact us on there but please let us know let us know what you're finding um to be most helpful within these podcast episodes and what you want to see more of. Because guys, we listen. We do live feeds on our social media accounts to ask you guys what you want to see more of and and give you the opportunity to vote. But I understand a lot of people out there have cut off social media. They've stopped consuming that for their own needs and that's fine. Um, But let me know what what you're wanting to talk about, what you want to hear more from, for uh, what you want to hear more about from us. Because you guys are what drives me. Right, I want to make sure that I'm going to put out here what I think is valuable no matter what. I'm always going to say the shit. I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to be transparent. I'm not going to talk things up that I don't believe in. 
I'm not going to advertise things that I don't use. I'm always going to keep it transparent, keep it real, keep it 100, right? So I'm always going to put content out there that I believe in, that I think is important, but I want to make sure that I'm also getting content in there that you guys are passionate about and you want to learn more about, okay? Because if they overlap, that's when magic happens. So with that, guys, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to keep it a little shorter today, so uh, give you guys a break. Hope you're enjoying your uh, Friday. Have a great one.